Welcome to the design of the Mobile Modular Room Robot M2R2. In this video series I would like to introduce you to the topic of do-it-yourself robot design. Here we will build a mobile robot on wheels which is mainly intended for indoor room movements. We will build it with modularity in mind, meaning we will be able to interchangeably place different parts such as motors, sensors and power electronics depending on the purpose that we want from this specific build. We are starting by building a base. Robot base in this sense is the body of the robot on which we integrate different electronic components. The base will determine the size, the speed and the types of motion a robot will have. M2R2 has four mechanism wheels, with which we are able to achieve omnidirectional movement with reduced skidding and without the need for additional steering mechanism. Through this we reduce the complexity of our robot base design. The initial size of the robot is mostly defined with the size of the motors and the battery which we are using to power up the robot. At the beginning of the robot design we will choose the motors. As we have already decided on the mechanism wheels, now our robot must have a motor for each wheel. Which motor type our robot needs depends on the function it has to fulfill, the speed it needs to have and the precision of motion it has to achieve. Type of motor we choose will also influence the software complexity. To avoid the need for the encoders, I have chosen to begin with the stepper motors. In our application we don't need great speeds, but we would like to control the number of rotations the wheels turn with relative accuracy. Steppers are not fast, but they allow us to move the motors by exact number of steps, leaving us with a sense of motion and distance control. The negative side here is that they don't pre provide any motion feedback, such that we get from servo motors and encoders. Further advantage of steppers is high constant torque. They are also relatively cheap, available and reliable. Main disadvantage for us here is that they can be very noisy. As a first choice for M2R2, I have selected the steppers NEMA 17, as they are currently popular, available and they are rather cheap. NEMA steppers are categorized by the frame size and NEMA 17 means that the size of the faceplate is 1.7 by 1.7 inch, which is approximately 42 by 42 mm faceplate. Because it was easy to find, I have chosen NEMA 17 with the length of 48 mm or approximately 1.9 inch. These steppers have 4 times M3 threaded holes on their faceplates which we will use to attach them on the robot base. We will use these specifications as a guideline for the motor's bracket design. Now that we have the motors, we also have a basic outline of the size of our robot, as you can see here on the screen. Next step is to choose the drivers for these stepper motors. I'm starting with the DRV8825. For the same reason I had with the motors, they are cheap and easy to get. They come with their own small heat exchanger, which should be placed on top of the chip to prevent overheating. They can receive input from 8 to 45 volts, and with the heat sink they can endure up to 2.2 amps. In the next video we will connect the drivers with the steppers, but for now we are only focusing on the general design and we need to reserve space for them on the robot base. There are a couple of things that are important to us right now. First, the pins of the driver are on the opposite side of the chip. And second, on the chip we have to place the heatsink and we should have some airflow available to cool it down. Because of these two reasons, I want the driver to be directed with the pins down. This way, we should be able to hide most of the wires going to the drivers and also have heatsinks in an open space. For the purpose of space reservation and balanced weight distribution, the center of the robot base should contain most of the electronics and battery. So I have reserved that space for the battery, power distribution electronics and the microcontrollers. With these new reservations we are left with limited space for the drivers. 
especially when we consider the amount of wires that are going to them. As you can see here on the screen, this is the place I have chosen for them. There are plenty of other positions for them, but to move forward with the design, I have made this decision simply because they suit my design preference. As I have already mentioned, for this robot I have chosen mechanum wheels to simplify the design of the robot base. If we would have normal wheels, we would need either to skid while moving or design a steering mechanism. Also, we said that this M2R2 robot is a room robot, meaning it is contained in a single area, a room without a threshold. To have the robot move to another room or to move in rough terrain, we would need to design a suspension system for it. And this is the reason why I have stated that this is a room robot. This fits perfectly for my choice with the Mechanon wheels. We can discuss more about all of this later when we start testing the robot, but for now, let's see how to assemble the wheels on our steppers. For the beginning, I have chosen the metallic Mechanon wheels of a 60mm diameter. These wheels come with the couplers for a 5mm shaft and we will talk more about this during the assembly. Now let's position the wheels. Mechanon wheels come in pairs, left and right orientations. This orientation can be seen looking at the rollers on the wheels. The rollers are at the 45 degrees angle relative to the wheels rotation axis. This enables our robot to achieve omnidirectional motion by having multiple combinations in which way the wheels rotate. This we will see during the software development for the motor control. It is important to position the wheels correctly, as shown here in the image. And it's also important to have the same distance from the center of the wheels as shown here. This is important because it will give us easier direction control during the software development. As you can see, this now fully defines the robot size and shape. Now we have to design the holding brackets and connecting plates of the robot. Keeping in mind that we will need to place the battery and the power distribution electronics in the center. Custom parts for the robot will be made with 3D printing. I am using a Prusa i3MK3 and PATG material. Each component is designed to speed up the printing time and most of the parts don't need any support prints. Custom parts are made for the electronic components I am using here, but they can easily be reworked for similar components. For instance, if you were to build this robot by yourself, but you choose to use NEMA 17 with 39mm length, you would still be able to use the same brackets as I, but you would also be able to make slight adjustments from the step files provided. I have uploaded each part on my GrabCAD account, and you can also find the electronics and the robot there. From there you can simply download the steps and import the parts in CAD software of your choice. The link for my GrabCAD account is in the description. Now for the body parts. First we need a motor bracket. We will design it around the stepper motor. Important features of these motors are the shaft size, the position of the M3 threaded holes, the connector position and of course the size of the motor. Here you can see the general design of the bracket. For the bracket to be easily printable I have left two sides open. One of these two sides provides clearance for the connector, as you can see it on the screen. For the purpose of easier assembly, I have also used three M3 clearance holes instead of all four. We also need to create a mirrored bracket for the opposite side. Here you can see all four brackets with wheels and motors. Now we need to connect the front two brackets. Here you can see the design I have chosen for this middle piece. We have to add holes to assemble the plate coming on the top. The same is done on the rear side of the robot. After playing a little bit around the drivers and the preset holes, I have arrived at this design. In the front, I have left some free space for the wiring, and at the top, we have two extra holes reserved for the battery charging the microcontrollers. The last thing we have to do here is connect the front and the rear of the robot and reserve space for the main battery and electronics. As you can see here, at the bottom we have a housing for the main battery and at the top we have holes reserving space for electronics. The initial design of the robot base is now complete, 
We can now connect everything with the fasteners. We are done with the first part of the design, choosing the motors and creating custom parts with shaped M2 R2. The design part is very subjective and you can easily create something different. For now, we won't lose any more time on the general design, but we will start to add electronics and make the robot move. In the next video we will connect the motors with a microcontroller and distribute the power from the batteries. I will define the schematics and wirings needed to connect and charge the M2R2. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you would like to see further development of the M2R2, please subscribe. I would like to hear your opinion, so please share any comments on the state of the M2R2 so far. I will try to introduce your suggestions in the next build or maybe later in this build. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.